Hello. Thank God today is Friday. Praise God. Now, I don't know why I love Fridays. I think this is the reason. You've been listening to this broadcast from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today is Friday. This is what I want to encourage you to do. Use this weekend to listen to all of them. See, Listen to all of it straight. It will help you. And then also I encourage you to like our page on, on, on YouTube. See, Subscribe to our page on YouTube, I mean. And then put on the notification button so you'll get the message right on time. See, That's very, very important. And help me share this message so someone else will get blessed, not just you. Praise God. Now, we're talking about praying for our nation, and God commanded us to do that. So yesterday, I was sharing some thoughts with you, and I said, listen, we made a mistake as a nation, as, as, as a young people. What, you see, what is happening right now should have happened from when this government came in in 2015. We had an opportunity. Now, even if or even though the government didn't know how to use the kind of overwhelming support that they had then. We could have changed anything we wanted then. But you see, <clears throat> the same thing is happening right now. And what's happening? Oh, okay, end SARS, end SARS. Okay, fine. The government said we're ending SARS. And then we don't trust the government to just go sleep and expect them to end it. We want to follow through the process and really see that it is ended. But then you know what the government is thinking about. Then the SAS issue is such a little thing to spark all this protest that is still going on. And then people, are, even the, 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 the people protesting are wondering, um, yeah, so yeah, we should still be on the street, but then um, what, what exactly, what next? So the, the young people are trying to find out what next. You see, in that state of transition, the government decided to step in and scatter everything because there was no direction anymore. You know, someone said, ah, the, 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 the young people needed leadership. Not necessarily leadership in a person, but leadership in terms of getting direction. You see, direction has a way of giving leadership. When people, are, when people have a clear-cut direction, everybody will just seem to know what they are doing. You see, the first direction they had was ending the SARS thing. There was nobody leading per se, but then there was direction. So the direction they had gave them kind of a structure in leadership. Everybody seemed to know, you know, some you know, amazing things people did. People who were raising money for others, people who were, who were go, cooking to feed them. Who, who, who told them to do all these things? But then, that one was done. Next direction, is that's where the confusion came. But I want to, I want to advise. Because, see, everything I say to you are things, you know, talking with the Lord. Because these are all the things you share with the Lord. Say, Lord, so what do we do next? This is where prayer comes. See, because people think prayer is, oh, let's gather. Reko baba ba, reketeke, ropo bobo shikate. No, hey, Lord, what do we do next? And just be quiet before the Lord. What do we do? I've told you what the Lord said to me. Deal with the money issue. The society will get better. Now, how do you deal with the money issue? We have an opportunity even right now. The president just passed the budget. Right? Is it not, not, not passed now? He just submitted the budget to the National Assembly. They are going to start deliberating on that budget. Now, that budget is what is going to control what money is spent for for the next year. Now, that is an area people should set their minds on. Now, what do you mean set your mind? Just watch and see what they are going to do. This is when the young people are to engage those in the National Assembly. And listen, we are going to monitor what is going on. What stops us from creating an app for monitoring? We have the knowledge. 
someone creates an app for to monitor. You see, listen, as they not wait until the budget is passed. You don't wait for the budget to be passed. You get involved in the deliberation. When, when every agency is going to defend their budget, we ask questions. So when they begin to say, um, I want to buy cutleries, and you ask them what happened to the cutleries last year. Did they expire? You find out, not, not, not on social media now. Yes, you create awareness on social media. But listen, the same way you put pressure on the government to come out to say, okay, you know what, we are disbanding SARS. And they eventually did, whether it's, it's smoke screen or really. They now, they realize that we've got to respond to those people. It is easier to tackle the MDAs. It is easier to tackle the government agencies. They are the ones that spend the money. It's easier to tackle them. Tackle them how? What are they? What is in their budget? What do they need to spend this money on? Then you begin to ask yourself, what is their procurement process? What is it? Then you want to know who's getting who, which contract. You want to see transparency in the system so that as young people, you can apply for the same jobs and you know that it's going to be given to you. This is when to put the pressure on them. Monitor everything. You set up an app. Oh, this ministry, this, this agency, they, in their budget. And then you know when every money is released. Because the fact that it's in the budget doesn't mean to be done. The budget, first of all, it has given them the law. Secondly, is you find out what money is being released for. Now, that's where we put our eyes. Now, the moment you put your eyes in there, one thing that's going to happen, the money is going to begin to spread. That's number one. Number two, no one is going to be claiming, I, I am the one, I handle this, so I, all the jobs are collected. So now you begin to make that job, you see, that job of, I, I want to run into policies, less lucrative. Many people run into politics today for just one simple reason, how much money they have seen they can get in that place. So that's why you see people spend a lot, of, people take loan to run for an election, in hundreds of millions to run for an election. Why do you think they are doing that? Because they, they are passionate to serve you? No, sir. If they are passionate to serve you, they will go from house to house begging people, hey, support, let's bring your money, support me so that, but because they, they didn't get the money from you in the first place. And they pay a high price for that position. So it becomes a self-serving thing. But how do we change that? I'm telling you how to change that. Put your eyes on the money. Put your eyes on the money. Look at, look at a government, look at an agency like CBN, for example. Why do we have different exchange rates? So it's so easy for someone who knows the CBN governor right now. To collect dollars at the official rate and sell it at the black market no monetary nothing nothing is going to happen meanwhile just travel to any african country you walk into a shop just a normal shop you can change your dollars and how do you know the rate you take out your phone and you just check on your phone and see the rate and then you see that the rate they are giving is the same rate you see worldwide i mean it's on the internet but not so with nigeria Nigeria, the rate you find on the internet is different from what is going on on the streets. Someone is making, is living fat on that. Is that not something we should put pressure? Deal with the money issue. The moment you deal with the money issue, the leadership issue will become balanced. And you don't deal with it by saying, change the, change the president, let the president go. That is not the, that is not the solution. You know, someone say, let a youth, let, let get, it's, it will be even more dangerous to get a youth right now if, if we don't change the pillars upon which leadership stand in our nation first. You think you will just change the roof and the house will be okay? No, sir. No, sir. The roof is standing on something. If you don't change what the roof is standing on, with a new roof, the house will still crumble. In fact, it will crumble faster because the new roof puts more weights now, fresh weights on the building. Focus on that thing that is holding the leadership. If you strengthen it, listen, let us get to that point 
that even if a teenager becomes our president, he cannot go wrong. I mean, when I, when I mean wrong, in, in, he cannot just go this far. Why? Because the structures are already strong and it's there to hold it. If you want to protest, that's where to look at. Right now, look at the House of Assemblies. Look at the State House of Assemblies. And don't just focus on the federal government. When last did you find out the budget of your state government? What do they spend money on? What do they do with education in your state? What do they do with employment in your state? Right now, they have known that the youth have a voice. But let's begin to give that voice a direction. Give that voice a direction. I have seen this. The Lord showed me this thing a few years ago. That it was an election season. And the people who were supposed to be contesting, they couldn't come out to contest. They were looking for people without any stain to contest that election. I've seen that. The Lord has shown me that already. We are headed there. But I'm adding my voice. This is the direction that is needed. And how do you get this? Prayer. Prayer. The church is supposed to be educating the people. Yeah. The church is supposed to educate the people to know where they should look at. Now, prayer, another thing prayer does is prayer gives influence. In the midst of a crop of bad people, prayer gives you boldness. As a righteous man, you can be in the midst of a mob and they're about to leech someone or they're about to, to carry out an evil act. But prayer brings about boldness that one man can stand up and say, hey, we are not going to do this. Let us go in this direction. And the mob will say, yes, sir. And then they follow. Now, that is the supernatural effect that prayer can carry. Why do you need that? We need that because majority of young people we have are uneducated. It's the same thing. That's why election. If we don't shift, and is there another thing to work on is our electoral laws. If we don't shift the power to elect, if we don't shift it, from just the voting. Because lots of people who vote, majority of them are illiterate. They don't even understand why they are voting. But they vote. So all those ones need is a mob action. Hey, this is the person we are voting for. Yes, yeah, so we'll go there and they vote. If you don't shift, if you don't make our laws to help the enlightened people vote more, we'll still be having this Silly people in leadership. See, silly people in leadership. Are you not the one that says God is the one that chooses leadership? I told you. He chooses leadership according to the people. Change the people. The kind of leadership they get will be changed. If the people are enlightened. Say, but we have enlightened people. Majority of the people in our nation, they are not enlightened. They are not enlightened. And funny enough, the enlightened ones mostly don't go out to vote. So let's, let's concentrate. You see, now this is, what, this is what I'm saying is actually repentance. Let us bring repentance to ourselves first. And when we bring repentance to ourselves, because even a lot of young people put them in the place of authority is what they are going to gain that they will think of first. And then the structures that is holding that place of authority is, all, you know, I've heard, I've heard stories of people, innocent people, they, they, they were appointed as, as ministers or as, as a director of somewhere or something. And then someone walks up to them and says, sir, this is how they make money in this place. There is this account that the government is not aware of. We will keep doing this and be turning this on, getting this on. Ah, this, this account has this amount of billions inside of it. Yeah. Whoa. And then you want to go, no, that cannot work. That cannot work. We have to change. The next thing, they set a trap for you and you are thrown out of that place. How do you deal with such people? 
only by the wisdom of God. So prayer is very important. But when we pray, we must understand why we are praying. You're praying, one, a higher wisdom. You're praying, number two, the influence of God that brings boldness will rest upon men and especially on you. So that when you stand there, you will know what to say. You see, God knows what can touch every heart. He knows. He knows what can convince every heart. If not, if you're planning to go back on the streets, you're going to kill more people. Because this same mob are going to come against you. And more people are going to die for nothing. And the government will say, we told you not to come out. This is the direction the church needs. And the earlier we start doing it, the better. First of all, we need to repent in our hearts and submit our hearts to the Lord. And then we pray for higher wisdom and an influence over men. That the influence of God's spirit will rest upon men. As we carry out this mission, that God's influence will rest upon them. Now what's God going to begin to do? He's going to start forcing out the people who he has given a voice in this season. He will put his word in their mouths. They will speak it and the people will hack into their voice. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our time is up. Father, we bless you. Our nation is giving birth. And that baby is being born. And you are in charge of it, Lord. And we see the fullness of your great blessing in our nation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.